the more you write, the better you write. So that's one element of this. And so the writing is getting better. The storytelling gets better. It's always been easy for me because I've always allowed myself the freedom to write in my own voice mm-hmm. and to, and I, and I don't judge myself when I write and I'm very comfortable being imperfect. So I think that those qualities have been probably what has allowed me to really thrive as a writer because I'm not judging myself. Hi, beloveds. Welcome back to Love, Sex, and Magic with me, your host, Mel Wells. Oh my goodness, today's guest is so exciting. This episode is so packed full of juicy wisdom. I've got the one and only Gabby Bernstein on today, sharing all of her secrets and tips to write your best selling book. Gabrielle Bernstein is a number one New York Times bestselling author. She's written nine books now, motivational speaker, spiritual leader, and now a new podcast host. Her mission is to crack you open to a spiritual relationship of your own understanding so that you can live in alignment with your true purpose too. I'm sure many of you guys listening know exactly who Gabby is and are a big part of her community as well. In this episode, we talk all about the writing process, her writing practices, what she's learned through working with various different agents, publishers, how you can market your book. And we talk about her brand new program, Best Seller Masterclass, which I am so excited to be a partner with her on. That means anyone that joins her new program to help you write and publish your own best-selling book, I'm going to be personally guiding and coaching you through the journey. So it's very exciting. So I really hope you love this episode. Let's dive in. So Gabby Bernstein, welcome to Love, Sex and Magic. It's so good to have you here. So happy to be with you. I wish I was with you literally in Costa Rica. I hear the the <laughs> birds and the bugs and the whole thing outside. It's so nice. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty beautiful here. Do you know it's a good place to write a book from? Actually, which yeah. is what I have yeah. been doing this year. I've been writing my mm-hmm. third book um, with Hay House, same publisher as you. And today we're we're together because we're going to be talking all about the book writing journey. You have written nine books now. Nine, nine books in 11 years. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's insane. Let's just take a moment for that. Like that's incredible. And there's just so much for people to learn from you when it comes to the writing process, the publishing process. You're also a New York Times bestseller speaker, run a huge business that I'm sure every one of our listeners um, is a part of your community. So Having written so many books, does it get any easier for you, the process? Is there a specific framework that you always come back to that you've developed now, having so much experience in this world? Well, definitely gets easier. My writing gets better. Uh, My husband edits, um, there's like a final edit of my books before I submit them to the publisher. And he's in that right now. And he is sort of blown away by how the writing has changed so much. And that's the more you write, the better you write. So that's one element of this. And so the writing is getting better. The storytelling gets better. It's always been easy for me because I've always allowed myself the freedom to write in my own voice Mm. and to, and I, and I don't judge myself when I write and I'm very comfortable being imperfect. So I think that those qualities have been probably what has allowed me to really thrive as a writer because I'm not judging myself. And that untethered force can come through when you are free, when you're not, when you're not in that place of self-criticism and judgment. So I, I think that's probably one of the most important through lines that's come through for me as a writer, as well as I have very specific rituals. I have specific methods that I, that I have to stick by and I have rules. I will not write a book unless I've done the preliminary work of really grounding myself in the core message of the book. Mm. And that's actually something I teach a lot about is core message and how we have to, we can't write unless we know what the purpose and the promise is of the book. Mm, I love that. Really like embodying the work before you're sharing it and teaching it to others. Embodying it, yes. 
knowing what it is that you're trying to tell the reader. Because if you are in a place of sort of uh, being all over the place with with where your what your where your purpose and and promise is, if you don't have a core message, you're going to write yourself into circles. Period. Mm-hmm. You mentioned you have some really solid writing practices and rituals. Can you share what some of those are for you? One of my rituals is coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, I like that well, one too. <laughs> and I also think it's important to identify when you're best, when you're in your best energy, if you're going to write, because like if I tried to write at the, right now, it's like three o'clock my time. If I tried to sit down to write right now, it, it would be a disaster. I have to write first thing in the morning. Like the second I get to my desk, I have to make sure my son is fed and I can, and it's 8 30 in the morning and I can sit down with my coffee and get going. Because if I try, and, and even on the weekends when we don't have childcare and I'll say to my husband, I need from 8 30 to 9 30, cause that's my magic hour. That, that hour I could write 2000 words. I need that time and, uh, I will carve it out whenever possible and I have to be, as my friend Denny Shapiro says, uninterruptible. Because if you're, if I'm not uninterruptible, I am going to be all over the place. And the channeling that is required to write a really good book can't happen when you have a lot of distractions. Yeah, completely. I also find that my best time for writing is first thing in the morning. I love getting up at like 5 a.m. to write so that, Mm -hmm. like you said, I'm uninterruptible. I'm not having like a million messages come into my phone all the time or people trying to get hold of me for work, other work related things. Because, you know, you also run such a huge business alongside all of these books. It's not like you are just writing books. You've got all of these offerings going on, speaking all the time, you know, Mm -hmm. so you've got to find a way to fit it into your life. Yeah. You know, I wrote most of my books um, on the airplane of the book tour for the book that came before it. Whoa. <laughs> so I would write a book, launch a book, sell the next book, and then be on the plane, you know, traveling all over the country or the world, writing the next one. And, and and that was crazy, but I know that it was necessary because the books needed to come out at the speed and the cadence that they did. And, and also in the pursuit of my own personal growth because mm. I say that I write my books for myself first because they've been really great sources of healing for me. And so being in the devotion of writing for myself, I've had a lot of opportunities to write for other people. I love that. I think that's so important to write the book that you most want or need to read. And then naturally mm-hmm. it just affects and impacts so many people around the world as well. Yeah. It's easy to get behind it when you know it served you. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about book deals. So um, you've had book deals with a few different publishers, right? We both work with Hay House. Can you share a little bit about how you got your first book deal for people that are listening that want to be first time authors and they want to go the traditional publishing route? Mm -hmm. Yep. So I had an agent that was my first agent who was kind of, he's going to remain nameless, but he was kind of not right for me. Let's just be nice about it. Mm-hmm. And he kind of bullshitted his way of around like a year and a half of pitching my first book. And through my own personal connection, a mentor of mine at the time, I actually landed myself my first book deal through that connection. Mm-hmm. So he didn't even, he took his commission, but he didn't do anything except for just, you know, make me crazy. And <laughs> um, so I sold my book t- through this connection on someone who wanted to take a risk with me. He, I remember calling my agent the first m- month that my book came out and he's like, well, you know, I can't imagine that it's doing that great. Let me go look at book scan. You know, you're a first time author. Don't get too excited. And it was two weeks into the book being out. And I think I'd sold 3000 copies and he was fucking wow. floored because wow. for, for a first time author, that was a lot, 3000 copies in two weeks, you know, and yeah. he was floored. And he was like, and that was when I knew I'm like, you're not my agent, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, um, the publisher that purchased that first book, and actually left that publishing house, became an agent, and then she became my agent. And she agented mm-hmm. my next six, my next five books. And then my sixth book, she went back in house at Simon and Schuster and she bought that book. So we've had a long literary career together. Uh, so I think by the grace of God, I was get led to her and we had a long, long literary journey. We continue to, because she continues to make money off of my backlist and obviously has to send me checks monthly. And we were very dear friends, but I have different agents now, uh, because she went to a publishing company. So that's Mm. where we're at. 
Yeah, I find it so interesting that being an author is not just about the writing itself, but you've also got to be really good at pitching yourself. And you almost like have to become a, um, you know, I think Glennon Doyle, as Glennon Doyle puts it, you become a commercial for your book, you've got to be able to sell the book, not just write the book. So Mm -hmm. how would you recommend, you know, people go about getting noticed by an agent, a publisher, if they're a first time Mm -hmm. author? Mm Mm-hmm. Just as an aside, Mel, I think I should mention the course. Like, just mention it loosely, because like, mm. why not? Like, I'll yeah. say well, in my course, this da, 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 because everything you're asking is covered there, so we can just allude to it for you. Okay, we'll come <laughs> okay. back. Okay, sounds good. So, um, I cover this in detail in a course that I created called the Bestseller Masterclass because I have countless students that come to me saying, like, Abby, I want to learn how you did what you do. And in that course, I, I give them the full breakdown of how to write and market a best-selling book, and I really think that the biggest emphasis for the marketing of a book is grounding yourself in that core message once again, knowing what the promise is and landing it and nailing it so that anytime you talk about it, anytime you write about it, anytime you blog about it or podcast about it, the main message is always clear. You never want to be like, well, my book is about this, this, and this, and I'm not really sure because a little bit of this. No, you need to be super crystal clear. For instance, the universe has your back. Transform fear to faith. Okay, I know what that book is about. My book, Super Attractor, Methods for Manifesting a Life Beyond Your Wildest Dreams. Got it, want that book. So you you know when you have a core message, typically it becomes a subtitle, that you can just kind of go out and be free in talking about it because you're sticking to that promise and you're not detouring from it. Mm, I love that. So important to know what that core message is. And you're so right with self-help books, especially that tends to be the subtitle for the book. I love that. And I've also taken a peek inside the bestseller masterclass and I can say it's absolutely incredible. It's so deep. It's so thorough. And I'm so excited to be a part of the, uh, the launch. So I'm really Mm -hmm. excited for everyone to experience this program. More, Mm -hmm. more details to come on that. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned earlier, Gabby, about how, um, you know, you not being a perfectionist has really helped you in this writing process. So I'm curious to, to hear when you're writing that first draft, are you just not editing as you go? Are you just like literally just like writing, just writing and writing and writing and not going back to edit and just coming back to it yeah. much, much later? Yeah. Well, first things first, I have a core message and I have a really clear outline mm-hmm. and I actually share some of my methods for getting your core message and your outline together. And uh, we'll, we'll give your, your audience a link for this, but I'm doing this free training on how to turn your book into a bestseller. And I give my, my main methods for core message and outline. So we can, we can go over that in that link that you'll give them. Mm -hmm. But when I create that killer outline, I can then be untethered. And so I know where I'm going. I know what the intention is. I have a clear outline and a journey that I'm taking the reader on. And then I just riff between the outline. I get it all out. I'll then reread it, lightly, loosely edit it, move things around a little bit. And then I send it to my editor. And I hire an editor to clean up my manuscript as I go, because it just feels like the best way for me to stay untethered. And so she'll, yeah. she'll do an edit and then I'll move on to the next chapter. And then, you know, we keep that going. Um, the editor, Andrea is just amazing. She will just, just clean it up. She'll stick to my words. I write every single word of my books, every single word of nine books, not a single word is ghosted. Uh, maybe an editor has like changed a sentence once or twice, but these are my words, my books. And it is all about being untethered. It is about being free. And so that imperfection mm-hmm. comes in handy. I love that. And I think you're, you're so right about having the outline, like that creates, like having that structure creates the freedom for you to be able to riff and, and not completely lose yourself. Cause I, I can't imagine trying to write a book without having an outline to follow you know, it would be like coloring in without having the outline of the, of whatever you're coloring. Correct. Exactly. Good metaphor. Yeah. Mm, Beautiful. So I think a lot of people have this dream to write a book, um, you know, have so much wisdom and so many incredible life stories to share that really want to help others, but they have this story of, I'm not a writer or other people have already written about this. There's already so many books about this. Like what about my story is going to be different. There's no room for me. What kind of advice would you give for these people who are kind of holding themselves back because of their own belief in their own work? 
Yeah. I think that we, when we're in that fear-based belief system of who am I to do this, we're in, we're stuck in our ego. We're stuck in the parts of ourselves that, that feel we're inadequate or unlovable. And when we get out of our own way and make it, make the book writing process, not about ourselves, but about the reader, that's when we can clear those belief systems. When we remember that a reader, even if we touch one soul through the book, that, that we've done our job, then that's enough. And so if you make the intention to serve one soul, then how can you fail? And in the true expression of your experience, you are serving your reader greatly. And so I always say that it's your responsibility to share your work with the world. And I think when we start to focus on how can I serve my reader rather than I'm not good enough, then everything begins to change. Mm, I love that. You know, I, I've realized one big part of the book publishing process for me is like this, once I've handed it in, this sudden fear of like, oh my God, what if it's not good enough? What if it's too vulnerable? What if I've shared too much? What if people aren't going to like it? I'm curious to hear if you still have this, like nine books later, do you still have that fear of like, how are people going to receive this or not? No, I don't. But I am with this new book I'm writing, very mindful of writing disclaimers for the reader saying, hey, I talk about sexual abuse here. I want to mm -hmm. give you a heads up so that you don't get triggered. And I think that a lot of books, you don't necessarily have to do that or have the responsibility of doing that, but I don't want to activate people through the writing. So it's not about what they think of it. It's about caring for their experience. So in this new book that I'm writing, I want to be very cautious. Mm, yeah, that's, that's a really important point. Beautiful. So you mentioned earlier about like, you're really channeling these books, you know, and I think that is writing for me is such a spiritual practice. And I feel like we are channeling books where we're not writing them where we're literally channeling through, through us. So what kind of practices do you use to help keep that channel of yours clear so that you can receive this divine wisdom and guidance that goes into your books? I make sure I'm un uninterruptible. Number one, I think I also shared that I choose my magic hour. I say a prayer before I write. And I just mm -hmm. say, thank you, spirit, for writing through me. And this, th I do this thing that's hard to describe, but I switch to a, it's almost like I'm switching to a different part of my brain. Mm -hmm. Like I go, it's hard to describe because it's just sort of unconsciously happening, but I turn to the more creative space. So it's like the right brain's creative capacity. I get out of logic and reason and I just allow myself to, to turn a switch almost. It's very strange. It just happens. And it, it's, I don't really know that I can describe it, Mel, but it's so cool yeah. that I just lean into this other part of the brain where I just like kind of open up my, my ability to just allow and also, cause I, I am, I am, we all are mediums, but I have, I do hear spirit. So I can say, Hey, come on in, let's go. Love that. Really like tapping into flow state. And I imagine the more you do it, the easier it becomes to just switch that on. Yes, that is actually very true. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So I'd love if you can share more about the bestseller masterclass, who it's for, what it's all about. And then we're going to talk about the free training that's coming up really soon. It is the best course for anyone that wants to write and market a best-selling book. I'm going to say that with full conviction. I also feel like, you know, when, when somebody creates something that they're so, so lined up and teed mm -hmm. up to, to make, <laughs> it's like, I've been doing this for 11 <laughs> years and I've done it over and over and over again, multiple New York Times bestsellers. So I just feel this extreme level of confidence in my ability to teach people how to write and market the book so that it will be a bestseller, period. And so that's what the well, that's what the course will do. That's the promise of the course. That's the core message of the course. And it's a six-module digital course that takes the, the student through the journey of setting yourself up so that you can write with clarity 
getting your book proposal written. You'll, you'll, you'll walk away from this training with your core message, with your, with your outline, with your book proposal, with your uh, decision of whether you want to self-publish or publish, with expert guidance on how to do an ebook or how to get a publishing deal or how to get an agent. And I give you my whole playbook. I give you my six-month marketing wow. plan on how you can do exactly what I do to launch your book. So, I mean, that's why like, it's, it's perfect for you, Mel. You know, it's perfect for anybody, whether you have multiple books or you're just about mm -hmm. to write the first book, this course will uh, up-level wherever, wherever you're at. So I, I know I sound a little conceited while I'm talking about it, but really I'm just sharing because I think it's freaking awesome. And I know that it's really helping mm. my students. And I've got students that are, you know, as big as like an Amy Porterfield and somebody who's like the first person that's ever, yeah. you know, never written a book before. So I, I, I think it's really anyone where you're coming at, at this from mm. wanting to hear from me. Yeah, it's extremely generous, everything that you're including. And like you said, like there's really no, I can't imagine a better teacher to learn how to write a bestseller from but you you know especially if you're in the self-help right. <laughs> especially if you're in the self self-help industry because um you know like I mentioned earlier it's not just about writing the book but it's also about marketing the book and pitching the book and you do that so well too so I am so excited to dive into this program I'm program and I'm so excited for so many of my community to also take the program. So right now you've got a free workshop that's coming up really soon. Can you share a little mm -hmm. bit about that? And I'm going to put the link mm -hmm. in the show notes for everyone. The, the free workshop is uh, really revealing some of the four key principles of the bestseller masterclass. And it's the four methods and secrets really for your bestseller. And if you are ready to kind of crack open, learn from me, get a sense of what that training is about and start the process now, then join me for the free training. And it's awesome. It's, it's, it's taking you through the, the, the most important things that I wish I had known before I started out. And so I really want to save people a lot of time <laughs> and the number one mistake that people make when they're writing a book and how you could fix it. And the number one reason we block ourselves from writing our books and the best marketing method that I could share possibly. I, I give that one away. So it's, it's really an important uh, first step for anyone. If you're thinking, yeah, I'm a little blocked or I could be doing this mm -hmm. even better. How could I, how could I take the next step? Just join the free training click the link in Mel's show notes and just check it out because yeah, it's awesome. Amazing. And I'm super excited to be partnering with you on this launch, Gabby. And for everyone listening, anyone that is joining bestseller masterclass, Gabby's wonderful course, as a part of my community, I'm also going to be doing some live coaching with people to support them through the program as well. So Gabby, we always ask all of our guests on Love, Sex and Magic, these three questions. What is one thing that you are loving right now? I'm loving being a mom to a toddler. Mm. Well, that's beautiful. <laughs> what is one thing that turns you on? Authenticity. Beautiful. Vulnerability. Beautiful. And Two when things. was the last time you experienced magic? Today. I am launching my own podcast right now. It's out when this is out. It's called Dear Gabby, and I do uh, I coach people and workshop people in real time on my show. And every time I record, mm. it's real magic. It's, it's wow, that magic. sounds magic. I yeah. can't wait to tune into that. Beautiful. Well, Gabby, where can everyone come and hang out with you, be a part of your community, and hear more about everything that you've got coming up? I would say subscribe to Dear Gabby on pod, on Apple and uh, just follow me on Instagram at Gabby Bernstein. Everything's there. Uh, DearGabby.com. You got me. Beautiful. I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. I mean, we're all everywhere You, have, you do a very good we're job of being everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stalking you on the internet. Gabby, thank you so much for your time today. I'm so excited for everyone to join your bestseller masterclass and learn more from you in the beautiful world of entrepreneurship and authorship. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. And congratulations on your third book. It's a big deal. Oh, thank you. I'm very excited about it. So beautiful souls, hope you got so much from that episode. Remember, you can hit the link in the show notes to go and check out Gabby's free training to get the top four secrets that she has to your best selling book. 
And a reminder that if you want to join Bestseller Masterclass, you can do so through me and I'll be guiding and coaching you throughout the process myself as well. So if you love this episode, make sure you share it on your stories, tag me, tag Gabby, let us know what you thought of this episode. Make sure you're subscribed for all of our new episodes. And as always, take care. I hope your life is enriched with plenty of love, sex and magic. See you next week. Mm -hmm.